be a student of possibility. Number one. Next, be a student of opportunity. Possibility is one study. Opportunity is another study. Then third, be a student of ability. Here's the next one that's vitally important, and that's the study of inevitability. Some things at certain times become inevitable, and we'll go through that. And the last one is rationality. How to be a speed thinker. How to grasp problems and take them apart and put them back together uh, in, in rapid fashion. How to ponder something and then make sure you know, that it fits you, it fits your philosophy, it fits what you want to accomplish. Rationality, very important subject to study. So that's the list. Possibility, opportunity, ability, inevitability, and rationality. Now let's start with possibility. I heard a sermon just a few weeks ago. I'm going to abbreviate it, but I think you're going to get the points that I'm going to cover here. I thought it was one of the classic sermons I've ever heard. And it had three major points. Not 30, just three. But they were so classic, and here they were for your notes. Number one, if you think it's impossible, it isn't. Point number two. If you think you know everything, you don't. Here was number three. If you think you're alone, you're not. I thought those are some classic points. If you think it's impossible, it isn't. If you think you know everything, you don't. If you think you're alone, you're not. Now, under the title, If You Think It's Impossible, It Isn't, he told a unique story. It's the story of Rich DeVos, founder of Amway. Rich DeVos needed a heart transplant. Critical. Now fast forward. Rich DeVos gets his heart transplant. That's one part of the story. But here's the rest of the story that's remarkable. Later, and not too long ago, Rich DeVos has the opportunity to have dinner with the lady who gave him her heart. You say, that's impossible. When I heard this, that's exactly what I said. The congregation that listened to the sermon, this is exactly what they all said. Impossible. You couldn't possibly have dinner with the person who gave you their heart. Here's what happened. There was a lady who needed, I believe it was a liver transplant. And many times it's best if the liver and the heart go together in a transplant. So someone who dies has donated their organs. This lady gets the liver and the heart as a single transplant. And now her heart is left over, and her heart goes to Rich DeVos. And that's how it was possible for Rich DeVos to have dinner with the lady who gave him her heart. Fantastic story. No telling what technology will do in the years to come, no telling what your faith can produce, no telling what can be done. That was a great point. If you think it's impossible, it isn't. Then the next point was classic. If you think you know everything, you don't. How often we've learned this, right? From the time we were just young until probably the present time to where there were times along the way when we thought we knew it all. You know, we thought we knew everything. We thought we had it down. We thought we had it made. You know, we thought we had this one locked. And uh, sure enough, we were surprised later that we didn't know everything. We thought we had the answer to this problem. We thought we had all the answers. But as it turned out, sure enough, we didn't have all the answers. Thinking we know everything, thinking we've got it, then sure enough, something comes along to prove us wrong. But that's how we grow. Our own ego at times wants to believe that we do have the answers, that we've arrived. 
And then a touch of humility has to come to prove to us that, that we really don't know everything. We think we know everything about our business, but I'm telling you, we have a lot to learn myself and tell my story or at least say hello and see if the window will open a new opportunity. But seizing the moment, not letting opportunity slip away. Be a student of, of when it's the right time. Be a student of when this is the moment. This could be the year the first three months of the next year to set up the year 2000. Say, I, I'm going to recognize this as a new opportunity for me to really pour it on these first three months. I'm calling it springtime. Learning to recognize opportunity, be a student of opportunity. Now, here's the others. Next is ability. Human ability as we ponder and think back over as much history as, you know, we've, we've mastered of what human beings have done in the last 6,000 years and especially what human beings have done that we know more particular about the last couple of hundred years since the birth of America, especially us who are Americans. But the last, let's say, thousand years of the Renaissance walking uh, hopefully out of the Dark Ages when there was a whole burst of freedom of thought craft, artist, genius, music. It seems like all of these unique architecture, all of these things sort of began to awaken almost simultaneously. And within a few short years, everything seemed to be bursting forth like a, like a variety garden uh, called the, Re the Renaissance. But that helps us to understand human ability is, is just incredible. Given the right moment, given the right opportunity, given the right climate, given the right season, human beings can think, create, and do the most extraordinary things. That's general ability. There's a unique story talking about incredible ability of a university student who was being given an incredible award. He was in mathematics, and this was an incredible award of mathematics, and the ceremony was, was extra special, and here's why. This young student in his mathematics class one day was just sort of nodding off, and when he sort of woke up, the class was leaving. So he gathered up his books and prepared to leave, and then he looked up at the uh, blackboard and uh, saw two mathematical problems. When he looked at these two mathematical problems on the board, he thought, well, that's the assignment, you know, for the next class. I better jot those down. And so he jotted down those two problems, mathematical problems, and uh, then hurried out with uh, the rest of the class. When he got home that evening, he started working on these problems. And he said, these are the toughest mathematical problems I have ever seen. There seems to be no answer. There seems to be no answer. And he worked with both of them. And he just literally almost tore his hair out saying, at first they seemed fairly simple, but I can see right now there is no answer. There is no answer. But finally, one of them that he had really struggled with, he finally found the answer or thought he had the answer. And he, you know, packed up his notes. And when the next class was opened up, he offered his paper to the teacher and little did he know when he offered his paper to the teacher, the teacher looked at what he had done and he said, you know, I jotted those two mathematical problems down. He said, I've wrestled with them. There didn't seem to be any answer. Finally, I got a breakthrough on one of them and here's the best I can do. Well, the teacher was astounded. And the reason is because the teacher had put up on the blackboard the two mathematical problems that the world had said was unsolvable. These were the two mathematical problems that could not be solved and everybody agreed. And lo and behold, the teacher checked and for sure he had solved one of the world's unsolvable problems. And he was getting this incredible award for having solved this problem. Now, here's the unique part of the story. When he wrote those two problems down and took them home to go to work on them, he didn't know that they were two of the world's mathematical unsolvable problems. 
great story. The human genius is limitless. The possibility for thought is so incredible. The unique thing about thought and spirit, it has no restriction. It has no a physical body moving through, through space and time. You know, an airplane now can only go so fast. Even the speed of light can only go so fast. But here's what's incredible. A thought and, and, and spirit, you know, travels faster than the speed of light and has components that, you know, nothing else can match. These are the possibilities of, of, of the human brain, the ability to, to think and to ponder and to wonder and to figure things out. Now here's what I want you to discover in this study, and that is your own ability. Part of it you discover as you go. That's what happened to Mark. You know, when he first got into sales, you know, uh, in the clothing store, you know, he found out he could, you know, represent a product and he could do pretty good. And, and that was a discovery for him. And if he hadn't gotten that job, you know, who knows? You know, he might have gotten off into something else and that wouldn't have really started to tap his, his unique abilities. Then, of course, when he put the Herbalife uh, program together, those abilities that were there all the time started developing and started developing, and he soon discovered, hey, I can do this and I can do that. Not only can I do all of this, I can do all of this. And when it reaches this level, now I've got the confidence that since I've mastered this, I can master the rest, I can master the rest. And that's not only the Mark Hughes story, that's everybody's story. Skill by skill, language by language, Ability by ability, yours can grow just as well as Mark's or anyone else. You've got it. The key is to use it. Yes, you can learn to do this, but how about this and how about the next step and how about the next step? Don't stop. Now that you've gotten started, don't stop on your journey to study and tap and utilize your own personal ability. Next is, as leaders, we must be students of inevitability. What is inevitable? Here's a little scene. 300 feet from Niagara Falls in a little boat with no motor and no oars. We call this scene inevitable. It's over. If you find yourself in such an unfortunate position, it's already lost. 300 feet from Niagara Falls, little boat, no motor, no oars. It's over. It, it, it's already done. Even though you haven't crashed over the falls, even though that experience hasn't yet occurred, you're now in this unfortunate position and it's called inevitable. I raise this issue because what you don't want to be caught in is in those inevitable positions where either through carelessness or whatever, uh, rather than find yourself 300 feet from Niagara Falls, if, if someone would have painted the roar of the falls sufficiently for you way upstream. Or maybe they had seen an experience of someone who reached that inevitable point, you know, and then they were lost. If enough of those scenes were painted, then you probably wouldn't have been so careless to have found yourself in that position. And that's really what life is all about, learning from the experiences of others uh, that have either witnessed or have been in these, you know, inevitable positions where because of mistakes and because of failure and because of carelessness, they have found themselves in this inevitable position and sure enough, uh, it, it was too late. Uh, we must teach our children that there are certain points in life that are inevitable. The disaster is inevitable. The, the, the heartbreak is inevitable. Um, I learned it in economics. I found out early, you know, you could make 5000 a month and go broke. And way back then, 5000 a month was a lot of money. And I used to say, how could you go broke if you made 5000 a month? And the answer was simple, spend 6000 And if you're making 5000 it's just it's easy to spend that other 1000 and just not realize it. It just gets away. So it is easy to go broke making 5000 a month, just spend 6000 and And it's inevitable. You know, if you don't change your ways, if you don't recognize it soon enough, if somebody doesn't come along and sort of ring the alarm bells uh, quick enough, sure enough, uh, the inevitable will come to spend more than you make. Uh, one of my friends says, you know, if your uh, outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep becomes your downfall. And there finally comes a point when it's inevitable. So don't find yourself there, but be a student. You know, if I keep up my present direction, where will it take me? If I 
if I keep up my present disciplines or where will that take me, and my lack of disciplines accumulated over some period of time, where will that lead me? So the key is to be a student of inevitability so that you don't find yourself in that impossible position where you've crossed the line and now it's too late. Next, and the last one, is to be a student of rationality. Learning to put things through your own mind. And here's, we are usually only going to act on something that's important if it makes sense to us. Now sometimes what makes sense to us leaves us still a little bit short of what we should know, you know, for the full expanse of knowledge uh, to do a lot more things. But we can only really move as quickly as things make sense to us. Uh, sometimes we step out by faith, but it makes sense to us to, to use our little faith. It makes sense to us to, to take a chance. It makes sense to us to make the investment first and then hope for the harvest. Uh, but if it doesn't make sense, if it, does, if it isn't rational, uh, then, then we're probably not going to act. We have to learn to study, you know, our own rationality, what makes sense to us, and then try our best to make it make sense to somebody else. If you make the presentation in such a way that it's, it's obvious, it's, it's logical, I can see it, it makes sense to me. Uh, that's the way it seems to be, so we will act on that. If you'll get good at that, I'm telling you, you can affect a lot of people's lives. Now, here's the best rationality. We call it common sense. Humans have been given this extraordinary uh, ability to use their brain power to come up with what we call common sense, right? Yes, I've heard all of this, but common sense tells me that looks like that's an exaggerated story, not a real story. Common sense tells me. So part of it is to trust your common sense, but also to be willing to expand your common sense. What seemed to be common sense, you know, four or five years ago uh, was a little short. Now I understand common sense is to think of it this way and this way. So this subject of rationality is, is vitally important. 